Welcome to another session where we're going further into the du'a, the du'a starting with Allahumma adkhil ala ahlil qubur as-surur using the amazing commentary in the book Manifestations of the All Merciful by Sheikh Khalfam which is widely available online so by all means go right ahead and read on and read further into his commentary for we'll only be going through uh, some of the elements that are covered in the book inshallah this session inshallah will be going through the line allahumma farrij an kulli makroob o oh allah relieve every deeply anguished one o oh allah relieve every deeply anguished one and to begin with, just as we did in the last session, we'll take the word makroob and we'll try and understand just briefly where it comes from. Um, makroob coming from the word karb, and karb sounding familiar, or at least half of, the word karbala. And we know that the word karbala, the land karbala, comes from two parts of the word, or it's split into two parts, the karbin wa bala. And the karb part of it, meaning deep anguish, grief, affliction, uh, deep anguish and intense grief. And hence, we then understand the one who is makrub is the one who has deep anguish and grief, intense grief. So when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift someone from a state of deep grief, and deep worry and, and anguish. Naturally, we also seek the elimination of its root cause too. We don't just want someone to, uh, you know, but by wanting to feel better, naturally the thing that is causing them to feel in that way needs to be remedied, needs to be solved. So by asking for the star, we, need, we are also the, in, in inadvertently asking for the cause, the root cause to be cut off as well. So therefore it's worth us just pondering over what is the root cause behind one's deep grief, one's anguish, one's karb, if you like. And on the one hand, and we won't go into this side of it, but it, that's an interesting topic for another day. On the one hand, you'll have someone like, say, the Zainab, sallallahu alayhi who goes through intense grief on the day of Ashura. Now, the cause for that grief is going to be very different than the one who is going through deep grief because they are attached to having something or something materialistic, i.e. an abundance of money like their neighbour does, but because they aren't able to get it, they get into more of a state of grief and frustration and anguish and worry, etc., etc. The two causes, they're going to be very different. Say Zain will have her own uh, journey, if you like, and it's going to be a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc. for the mu'mineen. Um, however, for this individual, the root cause is really coming from their materialistic affection and affection for the materialistic world. And therefore, just as a first point to ponder over, when we recite this line of the da'a, we need, we need to ourselves reflect and think, have there been moments where am I currently going through a moment where I am in deep grief and anguish? And what is the cause of it? Can I pinpoint it to something materialistic that I am attached to, that I have a yearning for more and more and more? And actually, it's completely unfounded. It's completely against or not at all towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a first level of reflection for, for us that maybe it's coming from a place of weakness in my faith and an attachment to this world. So, as we said, when, I, when we recite this line of du'a, we're asking for that root cause to also be cut off. So if I am in that state, I really pray that 
that root cause, that attachment, be it what's whatever that worldly desire of it, if it's fame, if it's money, if it's power, if it's whatever it is, if it's nothing to do with Allah and therefore it's completely materialistic, that inshallah that root cause is cut away. Going beyond this then, I need to then assess that when I recite this line, what if it is that, for example, I, when I seek to be lifted from my grief, it should be that I can go towards my Lord. So whatever it is that I, whatever the cause of this grief is, I need to ensure that when I pray for its remedy and the cause to be solved, that it takes me towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it's a vehicle, it unlocks me to go towards Allah. So taking that first example again of the one who is, uh, for example, hungry for, for more money because their neighbor has it, by asking for, for this dua to alleviate me of this anguish, that root cause needs to be taken apart. And as a result, I need to see that journey towards Allah thereafter, that now the shackle has been removed, I'm able to now continue my journey towards Allah. And similarly, for example, let's say if you are in a state of anguish and a state of grief due to being in a state of poverty. Firstly, of course, you ask Allah to alleviate you from that state, but so that you can then go about living your daily life as normal and continue in a, a notion of safetyness that you're going to survive, that now you can spend your time uh, focusing on becoming uh, even more involved in your dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your journey towards Allah. And similarly, if you're facing a tough illness, you ask for that relief to come about so that you can then have the strength to continue in your ibadah of Allah and your journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just to conclude this first point, which is that there is a root cause behind that anguish and grief. We need to identify it first. We need to see where it comes from. And once we understand where it comes from, assuming it's on this side that we mentioned, which is one of attachment to the materialistic world that I can detach from it. But equally, whatever the state that I am in, whatever its cause, I need to ensure that I have the mindset that whatever it is that it is that lifts me out of this anguish that I then am able to, in that state of freedom, if you like, journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we recite this line, perhaps going on to a different point now, we, we reflect on this, on who, who are actually going, those who are actually going through severe grief. You know, we really reflect on those people around the world, or at least perhaps we should. And we should because they're going through war, perhaps, or they're, finding they're, they're going through economic challenges or difficulties or sanctions or health pandemics. We should really be reflecting on them. However, some people do come forward and say, you know, this isn't going to do much. What's the point? Why should we even bother in thinking about those? You know, it's not going to do anything. You know, they're, they're suffering. They're in a different country. It's not going to do anything if I'm reflecting on them. And there's kind of three steps to this, to, to respond to this notion of what's the point. You know, just forget about it. We're, we're never going to see them in our life. Firstly, is that our natural conscience should want to know the situation of our brethren. And if, it, if we don't, there is a question to be asked as to whether I've become that selfish and that uh, obsessed with myself that I really don't have a disregard for any of those around the world. That's a very worrying sign and one that we need to address very quickly. If I really don't care about uh, my brethren's states of anguish and grief due to, you know, unfortunate situations like an economic sanction, like health pandemics, like war afflicting them, just because I'm safe, you know, it's, it's okay. So we should really have a yearning to ensure that they are well and they are uh, okay. And if not, what their situation is. Secondly, they may say, you know, okay, well, we, even if we remember them, we can't do anything from, you know, a materialistic perspective. You know, I can't change how X country sees Y country. You know, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm just a, you know, I'm just this random guy living in London. Who, what am I going to do? You know, I pay my tax and, and that's it. And I think it's a very defeatist mindset if we take that. Not only because there are things from a materialistic side that we could do and we'll come on to that, but that we shouldn't neglect the first thing, which is our dua and our prayer. And this is something that we mentioned in uh, earlier sessions, which was around not forgetting that when you 
uh, have a yearning for something, when you want to supplicate for something, first you go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then go and carry out your actions. We usually do it the other way. But first, have that conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then go about doing what you can. So the doors of dua are always open and you should use them. We should use them. We should never neglect the power of dua. And thirdly, and this was the point that I mentioned about, you know, the physical side of it. I also need to do a reality check on myself, which is living in this comfortable situation that I'm in where, you know, I haven't got this war against me or these sanctions against me, etc. Am I intentionally or unintentionally actually contributing towards the affliction of one of my fellow brethren? Now, what, what could that look like? Yeah, but it, it, many people just say, you know, it's that's just, you know, hearsay. But actually, there, there's some concrete things that we could actually be doing that contributes to it. Firstly, you know, from a, the democratic right that I have, am I exercising that in a way that is contributing to a party uh, getting into power who then carries out such atrocities or that as a result goes and marginalizes certain communities therefore uh, exerting affliction and grief upon them because if so i have to answer for that at some point i find there may be you know no true party to to or clean party to elect for but am i actively trying or am i actively endorsing a party that is renowned for it is you know something i need to assess secondly for example with my business am i partnering with companies you know, just to get for, for for my revenue sake that I know are actively involved in uh, in in affiliating with organisations and other entities that are then marginalising certain communities and causing grief and affliction just for the sake of revenue, for example. Thirdly, with my purchases, you know, am I boycotting the right purchases? Uh, am I am I boycotting purchases that I know are wrong and actually? the companies that are behind those goods are actually actively promoting uh, marginalization and grief upon certain communities that involve my brethren just for the sake of my satisfaction of my day-to-day. Now, the, these are all very you know, practical things that also we need to reflect on that. Is this da just a mere utterance of, you know, relieve the, the anguish that these guys are going through? Or am I, am I actually actively assisting in that albeit inadvertently but i've got an active role in it and we shouldn't underestimate the power of having people come together and uniting in in, in this as a stance it, it can really make a difference and look at the end of the day if you are watching this that means that you do have some level of power you are in a much more fortunate position than many you have access to internet you have access to a device that you can see this being broadcasted on. So you are in a position of some financial, I wouldn't call it might, but some sort of financial stability that others would greatly benefit from. And with that in mind, we should therefore say, you know what, yeah, I do have an ability and I do have a practical responsibility to try and extinguish this anguish of another. Of course, Quran tells us that you don't, have to do more than you can handle. We're not obliged to do what is beyond in our capacity. And we see that in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 286, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah does not oblige a soul save to the extent of its capacity. So you can do something. You don't need to go up. You don't need to do something incredibly beyond your capacity. You no, know, you just do something within your capacity that can actually make a difference for those who are going through such deep anguish. So if I can support a family for ten pounds, ten dollars, ten euros, ten whatever per month, yeah, I should do so. I should, I should, I should try, especially in this month, I should really give it a go and, and try because that could really alleviate from a very difficult position that if I was in I would, you know, be be yearning for. I'd be yearning for. And equally, if I have a level in an organization, you know, power, I wouldn't call it power, but a level of leadership and authority in, a, in an organization, am I trying to do something with that to divert attention and efforts towards helping this suffering? And if not, am I setting up organizations to help with that? I need to do something active to try and do something about 
lifting the affliction from my brethren. As I said, it needn't be beyond our means. And Quran clearly tells us that. Otherwise, if we don't, again, it's just back to this notion of mere lip service, which we know is not going to suffice. And we understand that there is so much beauty in actively going out to try and instill happiness within the believers. And it's something that we should pursue. Attributed to the Prophet the following hadith, it says, Man sarra mu'minan faqad sarrani, wa man sarrani faqad sarra Allah. Whoever makes a believer happy has indeed made me happy. And, who, and whosoever has made me happy has indeed made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. We have a second hadith attributed to the Prophet where it says, Inna fil jannati daran yuqalu laha darul farah. لا يدخلها إلا من فرح يتام المؤمنين. Surely there is a place in paradise called the house of joy, and none would enter therein save one who had made the believers among the orphans happy. There is great benefit in doing something that contributes to the happiness of those who are in a very tough position. Maybe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is testing them. Maybe it's for other reasons, but still we have a responsibility to go and try and help them, to try and lift them out of this situation. And just before we head to our summary, one last point is that whilst we've spoken about lifting out of such moments of anguish and grief, there are some situations where grief is very much uh, promoted in our faith and it's, it's important for us. Imam Ali salam says, سرور المؤمن بطاعة ربه وحزنه على ذنبه. Imam Ali is reported to have said this that the happiness of a believer in his is is in his obedience and his grief is due to his sin. His grief is due to sin. The happiness of the believer is in his obedience and his grief is due to his sin. So when we are remorseful and in deep grief and worry once we've committed. Uh, an act that is contrary to the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and would displease Allah, that grief that we then experience is one that is positive for us. It's a positive grief that we should go into. So we shouldn't feel shy to feel that grief when we wrong our creator. Again, this comes back to what is the cause of the grief. And in this case, it's one that will then take us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a beautiful place to be, a place of repentance, and Tawbah, because we know Allah loves the one who returns to him seeking forgiveness. So to conclude, we've discussed a few different points here, all quite, you know, thin, but, uh, you know, ones to ponder over and reflect on. Firstly, we saw that this this makrub comes from karb, karbala, which, you know, perhaps is the thing that first comes to our head, deep anguish. This is coming from the line, Allahumma farraj an kulli makrub, Allah relieve every deeply anguished one. So firstly, we saw that this makrub comes from karb and therefore meaning deep anguish. Secondly, that when we pray for this anguish to be lifted, we pray for its causes to be lifted too. And then we recognize that the causes can be very different. The causes of, say, the Zainab's grief on Ashura are going to be very different to the grief of someone who is in love with the materialistic world and is unable to obtain what they want and they get more and more stuck in this state of grief. And then when we yearn for being lifted from the state of grief, we should ensure that once we are alleviated from it and we have that free head that we then journey back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that shackle has been removed from us, that challenge has been removed for us, and now we can journey back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We then did a sense check to think, am I actually uh, actively contributing towards someone else's grief through my position of authority, through my wealth, through my day-to-day decision-making, my purchases, etc. Am I contributing to someone's grief? Thereafter, we acknowledge that I do also have a duty to try and uh, lift someone out of this affliction, that it's very highly seen upon in our faith to instill happiness amongst those who are in a tough situation and it's a beautiful thing to do for a believer and finally we reminded ourselves that amongst all of this grief there is a type of grief that is highly recommended and that is the grief of the one who has wronged their lord and wishes to grieve and return to him in a state of repentance this is something highly recommended especially 
in this month. And inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst those who are in a state of repentance and turning towards him. And of course, we Allah ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that farraj an kulli makroo, that he relieves every deeply anguished one. Inshallah, you'll see us and join us for the next session uh, as we go further in this dua. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Oh